Jeff here from the Hot Homestead. Today we're going to talk about this door here on my RV. I replaced my door. No, actually I put in a new door. And let me explain what I've been doing here. So, my RV door is just fine. However, I've added the door to it. Now here's why I've done what I've done. Concho, when I go to work, he stays home. However, I need to give him access so that he can go to the restroom. Well, that's what that is. That's a redneck doggy door. I was putting him in the barn, in there, and in fact I had, and in fact I have a doggy door in the barn for him. So he could stay in the barn while I'm at work. However, one thing I've noticed is this. I am providing a heat source in there because there's been times when I've gone to work and inside that barn, even though I've got the insulation, it's about it's about five to ten degrees warmer in there than it is outside. But when it's single digits or in the low teens outside, that means inside it's like twenty degrees. And he's going in there. Granted, I got a sweater for him and etc. But still, he's got to be in there for a few hours, and it's twenty some degrees. I don't want to treat my dog that way. So what I want to do is that's why I got the dog door on that piece there and I added this door here. So the thinking is I now don't have to provide an additional heat source in there while I'm gone and warming it up. Instead the RV is already warm it's already 65, 70 degrees inside. So now all I got to do is just continue to provide heat here. So instead of providing heat in two locations, I'm now providing heat in one. Now, this is the part that I know all of you are going to laugh at. If I'm leaving the door open while I'm gone, I'm losing heat through this door, right? Well, yeah, I am. That's another reason why I built this little hallway here is to help block any wind that blows up against the RV, the snow and the rain hitting it and it's helped because inside this room it can be a whole lot warmer than out there um, during the mornings even though the sun may not be beating up against this plastic yet it still helps because there's no wind factor, there's no wind chill so let me show you what I've done with this door. Basically I took a sheet of plywood and I just measured it and trimmed it down to fit. This is all one sheet of plywood. Now on the door itself, this is from the dollar store. I got this tape on here because I put a screw here and a screw here and it was coming off so I put glue in through here and then I just taped it to hold it while the glue is drying. So that could probably come off but I'm just going to leave it. And then I got three hinges and I'll show you how I put those on here in a second. And then the door, I've got this little punch out and on this punch out there's a screw right there that I put through that's kind of my handle and so this is the way it looks when it's closed however when I go to lift up and I'll show you once I get inside I've got a latch on there to keep the door closed while he comes in and out to go to the restroom so now let's open this up and see what's inside So here's the inside part of the door. There's that latch, nice and straight, not. <laughs> then I just put a small hinge on this guy and he's just tight enough there where he'll stay, he'll stay closed. Granted I got screws coming through here but you know unless you're jumping around that's not going to bother you. So now let's get a better, closer look to what I did here on the framework. 
All right, so let's see how this this lighting works here. It looks like it's looking pretty good. So here's a sheet of plywood that I have around. I used a couple of little L brackets or angles. Put one here, one over there, and a couple on the bottom, and that's it. That's all that's really holding this, this together. It's not screwed into the RV at all. Then with this, I put some other pieces here, just some scrap pieces to not only stop the door from coming in, but also, as you can see right here, it also blocks the, the gap between the door itself and the framing. And that has helped a lot of keeping some of that wind from coming through. And I just screwed this into here and that was it. And all this is is just rested up against here and then I've got those brackets. There's another one right there. And then there's the hinge. There's my little punch out. As you can see right there's a screw that's my handle <laughs> my doorknob if you will so when I pull back hey there's the dog see how well it works so when I pull back you can see how redneck it looks but it's doing its job Yes, am I losing heat? Oh, heck yeah, I'm losing a lot of heat. But at the same time, though, it's keeping the RV warm. Because, see, here's, here's what I'm doing for heat in the RV. I have, I have the furnace, and the furnace I'll set depending on the time of day, depending on how cold it is. I'll set it at different settings. And then I also have... Then I also have a Big Buddy heater. Now I know it's sitting on one of the furnace vents, but that Big Buddy heater I move all over the place. And I know I've got a tank inside, I shouldn't, but I've checked for leaks and everything is fine so far. And I've been doing this, actually I did it all last winter and, and this winter, and so far all is fine obviously. So I'll use this guy here because he only burns basically one gallon a day on low. So I'll leave that on low and that actually, get this, that itself will keep the heat in the RV even with that redneck door 30 degrees warmer than what it is outside. So that on low with just this door will keep the inside temperature 30 degrees warmer and then I'll use the this guy here and then I'll use the furnace to help make sure it doesn't get any colder than 60 degrees so what I'm showing here is the door closed the latch is latched and when I take this little punch out door if you will with the little screw I showed you I open that and there's the RV door that's why I did it that way really and so now I can easily open up the RV door and just with a push it opens up and Concho can now go out the door and then I can push that in its place yeah I'm losing some heat but like I said overall it's been working great I've had it up for up for two months and it's awesome so that's the way it works inside and when I want to go outside myself ta-da is I can control it from here going up and I can adjust it I can either lock it or unlock it I'm going to leave it unlocked now and then I take the door and the door closes just like it normally does. So when we're both gone, I can lock it up with no problem. I did have to on here, there was a little shield along here I removed. 
and there was another shield here that slid I removed that but that was it on these hinges what I did on the hinges so on the hinge what I did was I actually put a, another piece in here so there's actually three pieces of this half inch plywood there's one right here there's the framing of the door and then there's another one there that's helped closing up this gap on the inside so what this does is this actually connects up between the two and then I sandwich this with this board here and by doing that that allowed me to put this in here without anything going into the trailer at all and then I did that you know the top bottom and the center because as you can see on top there's none up on top but there is to the right and then over here there's none at all and it just angles this way so it's not square it's not perfect it's actually kind of comical but I tell you what it works beautifully now I know some of you guys are all upset over how do you lock the door someone's gonna steal your dog I do have security believe it or not there's actually someone down the road that watches everything for me the only thing that's in there to steal is foods clothes and a dog that's all there is to steal the barn is totally locked the key is with me at all times so the keys not in there and then so all I simply do when I leave is I close this guy and then Concho comes out runs over there goes out to his little restroom area my dog can stay all nice and toasty in 65 70 degrees while I'm out in the out in the low teens battling the the winter but yeah I just want to show off my redneck doggy door in the trailer so the makeshift door a doggy door in my RV without cutting into my RV so I have the door frame here just OSB and then inside that I cut out a door and then I, inside that I cut out a dog door I'll put like a a towel or something over there to help keep the uh, cold air from from coming in now on the sides here <laughs> I didn't do a very good job right here as you can see because that's supposed to be like a square and it's not so anyhow, I needed to cut this side in a little bit, then this side needed to notch in just a hair. And so that piece didn't go very well. I needed uh, to also cut out the edge right here, and that one went much better. And then what I did was I needed a spacer because I wanted the door still to come out. And so when I used the regular hinges... I needed a spacer in here and the reason why I needed a spacer was because this guy here I did not need to have him interfering with the door itself being closed because I don't want to mess with the door I still want the screen door and the door to be intact I don't want to remove them I don't want to do cut them I don't want to do anything with them I will remove this and this but everything else I want to have still intact so the other door is actually going to go on the inside here so on that first cut I showed you that was really poor that's because it's cutting a notch out for this section right here and then this here is also part of the cutout because when I come up to here the spacing here is actually larger than it is down there so and I wanted the OSB to come as close to here as possible so that when the doors when these doors here are open I would have the plywood door in place and I want it to keep as much cold air out as possible the other notch is for the the cover here on the uh, RV I think this is called an inverter controller and uh, I needed to cut out for that section there
Thanks for watching my video. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it that good old thumbs up thing and share the video with others. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe and check out my other videos. I love reading your comments, so if you haven't done so, go ahead and make your comments. My name is Jeff, and you've been watching Arizona Hot Homestead. <laughs>